Hello, I'm Dr. Priya Josson and my specialization is in biochemistry and I love biochemistry. Today, I'm going to cover on the subject diabetes mellitus, which is a disease which has been you know, diagnosed with a major population throughout the world. And there are very severe complications if not taken care of. And that is the subject which I'm going to deal with, the acute and chronic complications of diabetes. Let us see what are these complications and how can these occur and what is the biochemistry behind that and how we can be careful about that. What is diabetes mellitus? Diabetes mellitus is a disease where the regulation of blood glucose is affected. Now, there can be different factors to that. It could be a deficiency of insulin production or it could be a damage in the pancreas which produces insulin or it could be a receptor which binds with insulin. And remember, insulin is a hormone which controls the regulation of glucose. So, whenever we have food, the glucose has to be broken down to give you energy. If the glucose is not broken down, the glucose accumulates in the blood, which leads to a rise in the blood glucose level, which is also called as hyperglycemia. And this is a classic thing which happens during diabetes. Now, what are the complications which can be caused because of this? Now, acute complications include diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma and hypoglycemia. Now, chronic hyperglycemia is central to the pathophysiology of chronic complications such as cardiovascular and peripheral vascular disease, retinopathy, nephropathy and neuropathy. Now, let us take the diseases one by one which could be caused because of diabetes. So, what happens is over the time, this causes irreparable damage to many body organs and systems. And doctors refer to this as the end organ damage because it can affect nearly every organ in the system. So, the first one is hypertension or high blood pressure and heart disease. Hypertension is almost uniformly found in people with type 2 diabetes. Now, as the blood glucose level increases, our bodies attempt to use various means to lower the concentration of glucose back to normal levels because you don't have the insulin which regulates the breakdown of glucose and there is a high blood glucose level. So, what does the body do? So the body senses it and body tries to reduce this by its own mechanism. So, one way the body attempts to do this is by holding more fluid in the body or in the blood vessels. So, this extra fluid causes the pressure in the vessels to increase and this leads to heightened blood pressure which leads to generalized weakening of the circulatory system. So, this is what causes the hypertension because your body is trying to you know, remove the, uh, decrease the glucose level by decreasing the volume and this leads to a higher pressure leading to high blood pressure. So, diabetes can cause high blood pressure. And this can eventually lead to blood vessels bursting in some extreme cases, which is also called as a vascular stroke or which can lead to the development of chronic blood flow problems in the limbs and other peripheral parts of the body. So, this is one of the first symptoms which is seen in diabetes mellitus where there is a tingling sensation at the bottom of the uh, foot. And this is because the there is a reduced blood flow. So, chronically high insulin levels are also associated with early development of atherosclerotic plagues. You would have heard about the plagues which can occur inside the blood vessels which can lead to a clogging of the blood vessels which lead to further risk of aneurysm, hypertension, stroke and heart attack. So, this is how the, you know, the diabetes on later stages, if it is not controlled, can lead to a high blood pressure. And because of high blood pressure, that can lead to heart diseases. So, one leads to the other. Now, the second complication is the eye disease. 
untreated diabetes can lead to a variety of eye problems including blindness and reduced vision so diabetes is a number one cause of acquired blindness in people under the age of 65 and is one of the leading causes in older adults so people with diabetes experience damage to blood vessels and nerves in the back of the eye an area which is called as the retina and this leads to a condition called as diabetic retinopathy so the eye disease which is caused because of diabetes is what is called as diabetic retinopathy and it can also cause abnormal new growth of capillaries inside the retina that can degrade blood flow and weaken the vision and once it occurs damage to vision is permanent so but however when identified early enough many vision problems associated with diabetes can be repaired or avoided so individuals with diabetes should have their eyes examined once a year by an eye doctor and people with diabetes can prevent eye problems by keeping their blood glucose under good control so that is the reason why they say that once you diagnose that you know you have diabetes it is always better to keep it under control because if not kept under control it can lead to further complications leading to acute and chronic complica complications which is very difficult to reverse back so this could lead to lowering the blood pressure and the cholesterol levels now the next one is what is called as the kidney disease or nephropathy so the kidney's main job is to filter blood so what happens in with people with diabetes the sugar that is filtered from the blood damages the blood vessels in the kidneys over time because there is a high amount of blood glucose your body cannot you know break down the blood glucose so the blood glucose you know ultimately the glucose has to be eliminated from your body which is being filtered through the kidney so kidney has got a major role to play now and this is what is called as diabetic nephropathy so your kidney gets damaged because it is continuously filtering the glucose so in extreme cases diabetes can lead to kidney failure necessitating frequent and expensive dialysis or risky expensive and difficult to obtain kidney transplantation so diabetes is the number one reason that many people are on dialysis and uh, doctors test the urine of patients with diabetes to monitor the for understanding whether they are having a kidney failure or not the next one is what is called as a neuropathy nephro means affecting the kidneys which is called as nephropathy next one is what is called as a neuropathy which affects the nerves so how does this occur sugar in the blood damages the nerve uh, peripheral nervous system which is the part of the nervous system that work the arms the legs and the other extremities so these are the nerves which are supplying blood to these areas now affected patients report pain and tingling or buzzing sensations in their hand or in the feet you would have heard uh, from your relatives or you know your friends uh, who would have said about such a sensation then it it is better to check the blood glucose level complete numbness or loss of sensation in the limbs is also common and patients may also lose bladder control or the ability to walk and may loss of ability to function sexually may also occur because because there is a damage in the nerve which is an acute complication of the diabetes next is joint and foot problems so because the you know we were discussing about the damage to the nerve poor blood flow in the limbs combined with the nerve damage and reduced or deadened sensation lead to the situation where the extremities the feet hands become easily susceptible to the damage and disease so damage to joints and ulcers of the feet are also common foot and limb problems related to diabetes can usually be helped with proper treatment and the control of diabetes however if it is left untreated wounds can become infected and limbs may require amputation so this was common maybe a few decades before but now since the diagnostics have improved and people are diagnosing it very early and people are controlling diabetes the amputation is not in that level because it is controlled at a earlier stage itself okay and those who are having diabetes what happens whenever a wound is there is a cut wound what happens is that you no know, there is a good supply of glucose in the blood and that that is like a very good medium for microorganisms to thrive so there that is the reason why uh, you no know, patients with diabetes if there is a cut in the wound the wound does not heal so it is imperative that those individuals with diabetes perform self foot exams on a uh, daily basis 
and undergo a foot exam by a health professional at least once in a year. Next is the infections of the skin. So diabetes can cause a number of skin conditions including fungal, bacterial infections, skin spotting and a variety of spots, rashes uh, and uh, bumpy or oddly textured skin patches. So most of these conditions are related to chronically raised blood sugar levels and become loss you know, becomes less of a problem once blood sugar is brought under control. So, individuals with diabetes are also increased risk of all types of infection because, you know, what happens is the immunity level falls down. Immunity level is nothing but the ability to fight infection. And for this reason, it is important for people with diabetes to get the annual uh, vaccinations and, uh, you know, in order to control other types of infections. And the last one is what is called as a cognitive issue. So, because as one of the organs most affected by blood sugar fluctuation is your brain. And the brain actually uh, depends on the, uh, you know, the glucose level. So, chronic uncontrolled diabetes appears to be associated with memory problems and dementia in the elderly. And it could also increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease. In younger patients, so the type 1 diabetes is usually found in younger patients. Uh, elevated blood sugar levels uh, were found to be associated with increased difficulty performing mental arithmetic and with decreased verbal fluency performance. So, this slowing of cognitive functions was reversible as sugar levels decreased. So, in general, we can say that the complications of diabetes mellitus can be classified into two. One is the acute complication and the second one is the chronic complication. Now, under acute complications, we have diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis is nothing but when you have diabetes, you don't have you know, enough energy. So, energy is supplied by the breakdown of glucose. This does not happen. So, your body depends upon the breakdown of fat. So, this is what is common in the keto diet which people follow now. So, the fat breakdown... Uh, you know, the metabolism take place and a lot of acetyl-CoA is synthesized. This acetyl-CoA is converted to ketone bodies. They are acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate. So, because of an accumulation of ketone bodies, that can lead to an acidosis condition. Means your, you know, uh, your uh, fluids become more acidic. This is actually very toxic to your body, which could lead to coma. Okay, so this is what is called as diabetic coma. That is the last complication, you know, the, the, which could uh, lead to diabetic coma stage, which is called as diabetic ketoacidosis. Hypoglycemia is another one where your glucose level can fall down. And uh, because sometimes when the insulin is administered, if it is not monitored properly, uh, when it is insulin is administered from outside, this insulin can act and you know, the, uh, the glucose will be continuously broken down and that can, the patient can lead to a hypoglycemia also. Then uh, chronic complications we have, you have the microvascular and the macrovascular. Under microvascular, we have the retinopathy, which affects your retina of the eye, nephropathy, which affects the kidney, neuropathy, which affects the nerves, diabetic foot, and dermopathy, which affects the skin. And we have the macrovascular complications, which affects the cerebrovascular system, the heart, uh, the the cardio, the the brain, the cardiovascular system, which affects the heart and the peripheral vascular disease. So, these are the acute and chronic complications. The major complications of diabetes is divided into microvascular, which affects the eye, the kidney and the uh, neuropathy and the macrovascular, which affects the brain, the heart and the extremities. So remember, diabetes mellitus is a disease which you can live with happily if you control your diet and you, if you regularly exercise and if you control it properly, it cannot lead to acute and chronic complications. It is your decision how you tackle the disease which makes the difference. Thank you.